Chapter 10, Section 0. Would laissez-faire capitalism be stable? Unsurprisingly, right libertarians combine their support for absolute property rights with a wholehearted support for laissez-faire capitalism. In such a system, which they maintain to quote Ayn Rand, is an unknown ideal. Everything would be private property, and there would be few, if any, restrictions on voluntary exchanges. So-called anarcho-capitalists are the most extreme defenders of pure capitalism, urging that the state itself will be privatized and no voluntary exchange made illegal. For example... Children would be considered property of their parents, and it would be morally right to turn them into child prostitutes. Child has the option of leaving home if they object. There have been no examples of pure capitalism. It's difficult to say whether their claims about it are true. For a discussion of a close approximation, see section 3 of this chapter. But this section is an attempt to discover whether such a system would be stable or whether it would subject itself to the usual booms and busts. Before starting, we should note that there is some disagreement within the right libertarian camp itself on this subject, although instead of stability, they usually refer to it as equilibrium, which is an economics term meaning that all of the society's resources are fully utilized. In general terms, most right libertarians reject this, the concept of equilibrium as such and instead stress that the economy is inherently a dynamic. This is one of the key aspects of the Austrian school after all. Such a position is correct, of course, as noted by socialists such as Karl Marx and uh, uh, Mikhail Kalecki and capitalist economists, uh, economists such as Keynes wrong, um, recognized long ago. But there seems to be two main schools of thought on the nature of disequilibrium. One, inspired by von, Ma uh, von Mises, maintains that the actions of the entrepreneur slash capitalist results in the market coordinating supply and demand. And another, inspired by Joseph Schumpeter, the sane one, who questions whether markets coordinate because entrepreneurs are constantly innovating and creating new markets, products, and techniques. Of course, both actions happen, and we suspect that the differences in the two approaches are not important. The important thing to remember is that so-called anarcho-capitalists and right libertarians in general re reject the notion of equilibrium, but when discussing their utopia, they actually indicate this. For example, most so-called anarcho-capitalists will maintain that the existence of government and or unions causes him unemployment by either stopping capitalists investing in new lines of industry or forcing up the price of labor above its market clearing level or perhaps restricting, immig Im restricting immigration, minimum wages, taxing profits. Thus, we assured that the worker will be better off in a pure capitalism because of the unprecedented demand for labor it will create. However, Full employment of labor is an equilibrium in economic terms and that that, remember, is impossible due to the dynamic nature of the system. When pressed, they'll usually admit that there will be periods of unemployment as the market adjusts or that full unemployment actually means under a certain percentage of unemployment. Thus, if you rightly reject the notion of equilibrium, you also reject the idea of full, uh, uh, full employment. And so the labor market becomes a buyer's market and the labor is at a massive, dis massive disadvantage once again. The right libertarian case is based upon logical deduction and the premises, uh, the, uh, the premises required to show that laissez-faire capitalism will be stable are, well, somewhat incredible. If banks do not set the wrong interest rate, if companies do not extend too much trade credit, if workers are willing to accept real wage-related pay cuts, if workers altruistically do not abuse their market power in a fully employed society, if interest rates provide the correct information, if capitalists predict the future relatively well, if banks and companies do not suffer from isolation paradoxes, then, then, maybe, laissez-faire will be stable. So, will laissez-faire capitalism be stable? Well, let's start by analyzing the assumptions of right libertarianism, namely that there will be full, unemploy uh, full employment and that a system of private banks will stop the business cycle. We'll start on the banking system first, see section 1, followed by the effects of the labor market on economic stability, see section two, then we'll indicate using the example of a 19th century America that actually existing impure 